Hi everybody, it's Eileen from No There's a Crafty Idea and I'm here with a video. Um, I've been inspired by Tsunami Rose and to make some franken paper. So I've absolutely been loving this. It's the first time I've ever done it but I am now absolutely in love with it and as you can see I've just absolutely gone mad and I've made loads. So all it is, I've got some masking paper which I use underneath and then you just glue the bits on and sew around them and you know what I've just so enjoyed making them so here's some of the ones that I've already made I've made a few Christmas ones as you can see and it's just using up all your old scraps bits of stuff that you you know you maybe couldn't place anywhere else or you weren't sure what to do with this is an image from a book that I found some wrapping paper this wrapping paper I think I got last year and it was on a, a, um, a gift from my lovely sister Mandy, hi Mandy, um, some tissue paper, um, some book page, um, I think this is an old, a printout but it was just the last little bit of the printout but it looks great and again a book page and just all sorts of bits, music paper so it's just it's a great way of using up any scraps that you've got and also if you've got bits that you want to use but you're not sure of how to showcase them this is a great way, I mean these I think Oh, do you know I'm terrible at remembering names um, I'll have to remember but I will drop a link um, I bought these on Etsy and um, and it's just like a pack of vintage Christmas um, photos and just by adding that there it's just give it a really nice focal point again book page this is from Antique Papery um, this was just a free download that I found on um, Pinterest and again book page and this this bit here I was cutting out some stars and these were the blanks left over so I thought well just pop them on and you can see the masking paper coming through underneath but it gives it a really nice effect so yeah um, and again old book page um, this was actually out of a, an 80s book about Christmas and then you know these are little they're from a book but they're um, all the covers from Good Housekeeping and this one is November 1931 I just thought it would look so cute there and then yeah just bits and pieces a little bit of scrapbook paper the scrapbook paper you've got to be careful with if it's too thick sometimes it you know it doesn't sit right on the page but yeah it's it's a really nice um, craft to do and these are the ones that are not Christmas themed um, and as you can see this is just a, um, a bit of an image that I had from um, an old children's book and I loved it because it is a beautiful image but I had nowhere to use it it was only the horses so I popped it on there and look how effective that is it looks absolutely great and this was some um, coffee stained um, paper that I did with some um, lace tablecloth <coughs> excuse me and then I did some stamping. This was just an experiment that I was doing. Um, I took some old book page and I used a few stamps because I just wanted to see what they looked like. And instead of throwing it out, I've popped it in there and it looks great. And on the other side, what I like about it is each one that you've sewn around gives you these little compartments to write in. So you can write about something there and then something different there and you can add something different there and then even do a little doodle. You know, it just, it makes an interesting page for your junk journal and this is some paper that I got free with a craft magazine um, this was out of one of my old um, books um, I've got the I think it's the Pears Encyclopedia from 1901 and I just thought what a beautiful image to pop in there and it's it's a bit of history as well and then a little bit of wallpaper as well so you can literally pop anything in and it's a great way of using those pieces that you might not have somewhere for but you want to use this was off I got a bunch of oh, the old music pages um, and it was like you know the movies music from the 1940s and 50s and how beautiful is she I'm sure I don't know well, I'm not sure I think it's um, it's not Rita Hayworth I'm not sure who it is if you know who there is drop us a, a comment down below and let me know um, but what a beautiful lady and doesn't that just look lovely on that page now such a lovely piece of interest um, and again just using up 
a piece of a book page that I didn't want to lose, a bit out of a diary that had a nice little um, drawing of roses on there, um, some old music paper that I've like cut the edge off and I didn't know what to do with it. I've managed to go it upside down but I don't care because that just adds to it. <laughs> and then again these lovely images that you find in books. Now because of copyright you've got to be careful if you're using them you can't like scan them or anything but this is actually the image from the book that it's the actual page but what a gorgeous image that is and isn't that going to be lovely and then yeah this is actually some um, stationery paper that I bought from Germany from Berlin when I was over there um, at um, Muir, Muir Park Muir Park Market I think it was um, and that's the bottom of the stationery paper and I thought what a, a gorgeous image and then again with the book images and bits from my old stamp book a tiny little bit of thin um, uh, scrapbook paper um, and this was a textured paper you know you can just literally pop anything on so I've, I've they're the ones I've already folded um, these ones I've sewn but I haven't folded yet and this was an image out of a children's book and you know how gorgeous is that it's just beautiful if you were doing like a medieval or a um, Celtic style book um, like junk journal that would look perfect wouldn't it and then you've got a ballerina on that side and it looks like the birds looking down at the ballerina you can just create some really great um, some really great pages and again I love these blocks so I'm, I'll fold this one and we'll see what it looks like because again once you've sewn them once you put the images on it it looks different and then when you sew it it looks different again and then when you fold it you, you see what your the final picture is going to be and what it's going to look like in the book and that's going to be gorgeous can you imagine that's a page in your junk journal and then you open it and on there perfect and if you don't like the sewing on the other side you could back it with something else I mean you would have to use something thin or you could use that page to put pockets on it's a perfect idea for a, a perfect place to put your pockets and cover that up if you wanted to but look at that isn't that cute love them so again these are just bits I've got a little tiny goober on there these are just bits that I've, I've just had left over this one's a bit more plain um, but this was another experiment I tried to put some I printed on um, tracing paper and I glued it onto old book page the book that it's glued onto I think is um, it's is an Italian book from I think it's probably probably about 80 years old anyway I glued that over the top of it and it wrinkled slightly but I thought I'm not going to throw it away I'm just going to use it because I, I actually like I'm, I'm a very tactile person so I actually like the kind of texture you get with it and it, it is a beautiful piece so yeah I'm going to stop waxing lyrical <laughs> I'm just going to finish folding these I'll show you as we go um because yeah I've been I've <laughs> been just like creating and creating and again I've did some um I've done some Christmas ones um and these are just bits of from old books this and this was from a it was a 1980s book and I think it's called a Christmas companion because there's another piece of it um, and all the pages it was a um, it was a paperback book and it did badly yellowed as you can see um, and the pages are a little bit delicate so I didn't want to use them by themselves too much I mean I've used a couple of them in, in books but some of them were really fragile so I thought I'll add them to this and then there you go you get the use of it and look at that isn't that a be beautiful page that you're gonna get and then on the other side you can read all about why the Christmas tree um, is, a, is a tradition. <laughs> Look at that turkey. Isn't he great? <laughs> See now that's an image that you wouldn't generally use you know. <laughs> but on here it looks fantastic. Because it's surrounded by other Christmassy things. And then it just looks really nice and majestic. <laughs> And I think this is the last one, yeah. So this one again was that 80s book. These, 
you're not going to believe what these are and I'm going to grab one to show you because this is something that I've only just realised and I'm absolutely in the moon, over the moon with it. And that is that you can use paper cups for junk journals. Now, if you've got a pound shop, a dollar shop, um, if you've got any kind of party shop or a supermarket where they sell like the party things and you see these gorgeous cups and they've got these beautiful images on and I've often looked at them and thought oh wouldn't that look great in, in a junk journal fear not because I'm going to show you how to do it so you just find the seam cut straight down the seam I'm not I'll probably not be the first person to ever try this I'm just um, I'm just over the men that I've figured it out <laughs> for me and then we're gonna just pull that because you see it's got a bit of a lip I'm just gonna pull that off if you find one that doesn't have a lip just cut round the bottom then we'll get rid of that okay now we're gonna cut that little bit off at the bottom because it's no good and we don't want to use it and then we're gonna cut the back of the seam off and then we're just going to cut this rim off. You'll have to excuse, I've got a very squeaky chair. So if you can hear it squeaking a lot, I've been trying to find the WD-40 and cannot find it anywhere. So my me, me chair is very squeaky, so you'll have to forgive that. <laughs> and then you're left with this. Now, I'm going to cut down, the, because you've got two images there, so you just cut down that. And then what you've got is this. Now all you've got to do is square that up now you can do that with a cutter, you can do it by eye if you're confident enough. But once you've squared it up, on the other side it's got that waxy feel, which is the waterproof membrane. And, um, and you can just pull at the corner until you can lift that. And once you've lifted it, you can see how that's going to pull off dead easy. Now that's a lot of the bulk, now that, look is very malleable and there you've got a lovely image to use in your junk journals and it's just a little tip that I've just picked up myself so have a look and see what lovely images are on these cups look at that and as you can see I've used them on here and they do work perfectly the glue on really well the sewing machine works well with them so there you go there's a little tip for you <laughs> <laughs> have, a, have a play with your party cups <laughs> the paper ones it has to be the paper ones plastic ones it doesn't work obviously so right <laughs> we were folding this one that's when I got took all the back <laughs> just a side turn right and look at that isn't that gorgeous and there you've got that area there where you can either write on or you could like use a stamp or you could put like you know you, you might have um some tags or words printed and yeah perfect and there's our little cup sitting there isn't it great i mean that's just the most wonderful time of the year that's just a beautiful image and what a pity to waste it on a plastic cup that's going to get used what for five minutes and then thrown out mm -mm. not in my class <laughs> right so you can see like i said i have been doing a lot of these so let's get on and do one i've got these ones um, which I haven't sewn yet and I'm going to leave them for later and the reason is that the glue is dried on these and I don't want to run wet glue through my sewing machine now I've got some red paper and I thought I might try some with red paper but basically what I've been using is this and it's this is called masking paper now you if you're lucky enough to be able to, to get it um a lot of painters and decorators use it my husband has a garage and the um, the guy next door he um is like a body shop so they actually use it to mask the cars off and it comes in big rolls i wish i could pick the roll up and show you but yeah, do you know what i've got enough there that's going to last me for years <laughs> and then i just obviously cut them down i try to get them as close as i can to an a4 it doesn't always work sometimes i'm a little bit skew if but who cares and then you can just use that for your backing one side is is like matte and one side shiny i glue onto the shiny side and then that's the side that you're going to have in your journal 
Um, but I've also just gotten some beautiful red print paper and it's quite a good quality so I thought I'm going to try it on this and we'll see. So I'm going to get all my Christmassy bits out. Now all I've done is all of my little bits that I, I haven't used in things I've just popped them in these little wallets and these are my um, um, bits and pieces that I'm going to use for the franken paper so these are my franken paper wallets and then I've got what I've done is I've separated out images and um, no this one's patterns images um, text and then general text and, um, and different bits and pieces and then in this one I've got some more text and music paper and then some blank papers as you can see I've already been putting some of them in but I've also put in here some of the Gail Agostinelli um, printouts just because her um, uh, coffee dye printouts are absolutely gorgeous and they look they work really well with these because um, I do like to leave a little bit of blank space and I think Tsunami Rose um, when she does her she, she says she works in elements of three so she tries to put an image, a text and either a pattern or a plane and, and I think that works really well until you get a few bits on and then it's just kind of trying to fit things in. <laughs> so I'm going to start, I always start with me images because I think that they're going to be the main um, focus on the page and for this one I, I really love that image. Now I don't know if I want to put it front or back but let's have a look and see what else we've got. As you can see, I've, I've got loads of these now. <laughs> I do like that, so I think I'll keep that one out. And you can see I've just got lots of bits of pieces. Um, these are um, from Antique Papery, um, and she had, she had a sale a few weeks ago, and um, I managed to grab quite a few things, so I think I'll keep one of them out. Um, oh, isn't she gorgeous? We'll see what she looks like and let's have a look at these because I want a nice big image and I do like these ones from that 80s book so let's have a look at that one see what that looks like and then we've got that nice big Santa right where's my little pouch now I'm going to pop this in see I've even got really big images that I wouldn't normally use but I will use them on some Franken paper because I think even with the big images you know it's, it looks good so I have I'm just gonna find this other bit that I've got <laughs> and I do have some more wrapping paper because I've been sitting cutting some out as well but I'm not sure what I've done with the scraps I'll have to see if I can find them in a bit not to worry right okay so what I generally do is start in this corner I mean this is one of them things where it's just whatever however you want to do it and it's a good idea to try and get everything cut straight as possible although saying that you can kind of go over the edges and then cut, cut it to the size of the page so there's excuse this chair it's terrible there's that now let's get some some text that's a bit big and as you can see these are just all bits that I've cut out of that book and some I've even got some um, Edith Holden and these are just words that I've I've printed out let's have a look and see what about this one now I don't want that next to there because it's too samey same so how about some music paper let's see what we've got here we've got text and music and stamps how about we do a little bit of music there now I mean it can take a while to get your you know to get the way you want it but that's part of the fun because you know you get to sit and play and there's so many things to to play with oh I like that that'll be nice oranges and lemons I used to love singing that when I was at school <laughs> see then that's going to be on the crease but that's fine because you're still going to be able to see it and it's still going to be a fun piece um, 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 um. 
I don't want to lose too much of that but I think I will put it there but I'll tuck it underneath there we are lovely so let's get some pattern out um, I do want to use some of the nice wrapping paper that I've got again this was what I got on a present from my lovely sister um, so I'm recycling <laughs> do you know what I might rearrange that I might pop that do I have a longer piece this is where it just catches me. I'm just going to be here all day doing this. And I have spent like a couple of days doing this because it's so enthralling. It's so much fun. And you can just get carried away with it. So carried away with it. Right. Okay. We're getting there now, folks. <laughs> right. We'll move those bits out of the way. And we've got another piece here. Now, this is one of Antique Papery. I like that there and maybe we could move this there kind of like the idea of having that there but I think I might cut it down a little so that it just tucks in or maybe we could try something different there See how I mean it can go across the top? There's, there's no problem with that. I think I'm going to try and keep you down on that corner. Oh, it's just shy of the top. Well, the good thing is we can cut these down. So I've been missing for a couple of weeks um, and I did want to just like say something about that. Um, you know it hasn't been a great time. We've all been struggling this year and there's been a lot going on for everybody. Um, you know it's been hard. I do have like, I do have a medical condition which makes it hard sometimes. And I do try to to like just crack on and not let it bother me, but you can't always do that. And it has been pretty bad the last couple of weeks. Also, we've you know we've had a few losses. Um, a dear friend of mine, her her husband has died, um, and I've lost a colleague at work, another colleague to the COVID, which has been tough. And it, it has, it's been a rough few weeks, but I'm all back to normal and I'm all happy again and enjoying life again and back to my craft room. And now, you know, let's just, what as the, the famous saying says, <laughs> smile and carry on. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it, you know, everybody's had a tough year. I'm not going to say there are many different anybody else. We, we've all suffered this year. It's been one horrendous year for everybody i think oh that would look nice there wouldn't it and we'll have a few little puddings at the top oh i like that right okay i've got it that's it that's what i'm going to do so let's get started with the gluing so yeah so but i'm back now and life's happy again and i'm you know back into my craft room back crafting again and um yeah just waiting for this show to end <laughs> I was laughing because my daughter was saying, I don't know if everybody knows Jumanji, but she says, you know what, New Year's Eve, Mum, I'm not going to shout Happy New Year, I'm going to shout Jumanji because this game has to stop. <laughs> she had me giggling so hard. I was like, oh my goodness. So I'm expecting that to shout Jumanji instead of Happy New Year. <laughs> Do you know what? I think I might join her. <laughs> this is certainly been a year that felt like a Jumanji game hasn't it <laughs> oh my word yes <laughs> but yeah that that was uh <laughs> she had me giggling with that one <laughs> and my mum turned 80 so she had her 80th birthday and yes it was sad because you know it's a quarantine birthday 
um, but she does have a very poorly heart and you know being a key worker well I mean in our house there are three key workers living in our house so it's not like we can go and spend time with her like other than socially distanced but we all went and sat in our porch and um, <laughs> and we sang happy birthday to her and gave her our presents and she loved it she absolutely loved it I bought her because uh, do you know what she'd never read Harry Potter until about two years ago and she didn't really know much about it and you know it, by the time it came out all of her kids were adults with their own kids and you know she, she didn't really get into the whole thing so anyway she was sick of hearing me and my daughter talk about it so she says you know what I'm gonna get the books for Christmas and I went right we'll get you them for Christmas so we bought her the books and hey presto she's hooked <laughs> another one bites the dust <laughs> as they say and um, so she wanted to go to the Harry Potter um, tour but obviously couldn't her health just you know it, it's not good she's got she's got heart failure bless her um, I'm gonna have to try and remember how I had these now aren't they <laughs> um, so her health's not good and the traveling you know it wouldn't have been great for her and she wouldn't have enjoyed it because um, she absolutely hates the fact that she can't walk as far as she used to be able to and that she has to use a wheelchair. She hates it. She really can't stand it. So when when we said, Mom, you, it's like it takes about four hours. You're going to have to have your wheelchair. Oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. So anyway, when we went, um, I bought her back a book and she wanted. Now, I can't remember which way I had these. <laughs> isn't that good okay um we bought her back a book and um it was one that she's been wanting and it was quidditch through the ages um so we gave her that for her birthday along with our other presents and she was like oh i'm gonna spend the night reading this now <laughs> i was like god bless her 80th birthday and she's sitting reading about <laughs> quidditch <laughs> oh you know what it is you're only as old as your mind feels aren't you <coughs> so she was over the moon with that she was so happy <laughs> um, and I says to her I says when you finish with it I'll borrow it and read it because <laughs> I'm just as much of a kid when it comes to Harry Potter but yeah that was fun so we had our birthday and um, I you know it would have been nice if we could have all you know had a nice big party for her and have everybody around because we were going to do it a full-on birthday party you know family do and um and get all the relatives up and and it would have been lovely she wanted a proper tea party we were going to do a, a tea dance um <laughs> but instead she got to sit and read harry potter <laughs> she's happy she's happy right now i've got to try and remember how i had these i was going to put that one there like that wasn't i and then that one, but I wonder if, oh, it's just not quite big enough, is it? I'm just trying to find something that will fit better there because it's a shame to have to waste that beautiful piece. And I'm just thinking maybe I've got a little bit of jaw Beth. Hi jaw Beth. <laughs> and oh yes that's going to be perfect look at that great okay let's give that a little snip saved by Jo Beth thank you love <laughs> um that's Jo Beth Sexton I'll put a link down below <laughs> and um pop over and check out our um, digitals because um yeah they're fun to play with um yeah so it's been an interesting few weeks and then <laughs> and then of course we went back into lockdown <laughs> which wasn't fun but you know it had to be done um throw out the lifeline or shadows i think throw out the lifeline is probably more appropriate for christmas than shadows so we'll do that one um yeah so we went back into a local uh, no sorry it wasn't a local lockdown it was a national lockdown um so yeah um 
the thing is, is like I said, um, three of us in our house are all key workers and my husband is a business owner and his business is classed as essential. So there was only <laughs> really my eldest daughter who um, works in a great um, little shop, but unfortunately she was on furlough. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, she uh, she was going stir crazy by the end of it. Three weeks or four weeks it was, I forget now. But yeah, so it was nice coming home and, and the house being lovely and tidy because she was so bored. She was just doing everything in the house, housework galore. And even food on the table, I mean, wow, it was amazing. Now we're all back to work and I'm like, oh, I've got to go home and make my own tea. <laughs> Spoiled, aren't I? But um, yeah, um, so that was fun. <laughs> so we weren't able to do anything or go anywhere or see anybody. And luckily my mum's birthday was before that. So we managed to get that in before the full lockdown came about. Um, oh, I could keep that little piece. Now look at me, see? You would think you could just throw that out. I didn't. No, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I'm terrible. Now look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now once I've sewn around that, there are a few tiny little gaps, but I'm not bothered about that. Once I've sewn around it, it's going to be great. And with it being on the back, on like this red paper, I'm going, just going to trim this. Um, it's going to be um, really stunning, I think, because I'm using a green thread. Red and green being the colours for Christmas, I always think. Um, so that's going to look great, isn't it? I'm going to leave that to dry. And while that's drying, let's collect all our bits up again. I think, do I have time for another one? Yeah, I've got time for another one. Let's do another one. So let's do another one on the red paper because I'm loving this paper. It was given to me by a really nice um, friend from work um, and thank you very much Amber. Um, yeah, it's just perfect because I was sitting thinking, it's one of those things where I was sitting thinking I need, need to go out and buy some red paper and then boom she comes in and says I've got this red paper do you want? I'm like, how did you know? <laughs> so yeah, that was fun. Right, we'll get our Santa Claus on. And we'll put him back again because I've just moved him. <laughs> Let's see. I kind of like the idea of having that there. And that's our pattern. So we've got our picture, our pattern. And then I want some text. Now, let's see what we've got. So we've got some... These are just recipes and bits that I've cut out from the, um, the book. Oh, look, that's all about Wasshale. Oh no, I don't want to lose the top. But we could put that there. And then we can put a nice image there. Perfect. There you go. Um, now, I do like the idea of having these in there. But I want one that's long enough to, to fill that little area. See, they're not quite long enough. Oh, this one. Yep, that one's going to do it. Perfect. Right, now, pattern. Let's get some pattern in here. I've got that bit. I'm just going to get a few more bits out. Maybe a bigger piece of that. I've got some more of that. Oh, look at this. I like that. Now, I wonder if that'll go across the top there. It's not quite big enough, but that's no problem. And then we could put that there. We're making little areas, so I'm aware of that. But that's okay. Because that might just fit there. See, that's going to be perfect. Okay, and then we've just got a little area there. And we want something going down there. So, let's see what we've got in our images. Oh, we've got some bigger images at the back. Oh, you know what? 
I wonder if we could put that there. Yeah, I like that. And then we need a piece that's going to be wide enough for there. Perfect. Look at that. See, that one came together much more easily. Sometimes I think you just need to get started and once you get started it flows. <laughs> Whereas I think your first one you're always kind of like umming and ahhing at. And then it just, you, you kind of get into your rhythm and that's it. It's, it's going. You've got it. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> oh, I'm blowing things about. I'm blowing things about. Right, okay, let's get glue in. This time we'll try not to move everything so I can remember where everything goes. Oh dear, this chair, I swear I'm going to throw it out. <laughs> I, I, I can't find the WD-40. I've got a little um, a little tub of it, like a little squeezy thing of it. Um, but the thing is, I don't know where to square it on this chair because it's all covered in. So yeah, I'll have to figure it out, I suppose. Right, now rather go over the edges than be shy of them just because you know you don't want gaps and don't worry if all of your images aren't perfectly straight some of mine are absolutely wonky and you can you can make it true again by just keeping to the paper let the paper be the guide and that way you can keep everything true there we go okay no, don't disappear. I don't want to forget where you are. <laughs> now, let's get this one on. So, yeah, I was sitting, once Once I got hooked on, on this, I was going through all of my old books that I've used to fussy cut images out of and, you know, bits and pieces that I'd had lying around. So I, I went through all of my um, packs and all my books and I came across all of these lovely images and that so I sat one night with just a pile of books and cut lards out and then tried to cut them as square as possible as you can see I didn't succeed on getting them as square as possible <laughs> but um yeah we, we got we got close we got close and um I'm, you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna let that one have its little tiny bit of red and um, now that's not quite wide enough, so we need something else for there. Okay, let's just get this bit on. Oh, did not realise that was folded over. Luckily, these have lines on the back as a guide, you know, for when you're wrapping paper, so you can see. So that's lucky. <laughs> Um, it was going that way, wasn't it? Because that's going to come in that side. Yes, there we go. Um, yeah, so I sat for ages just cutting out pictures and little interesting bits from books and stuff that I would never have used normally and would have probably ended up sitting in the book until I ended up getting rid of it. And now I'm, I'm using up all those little bits and the interesting bits, the fun bits, it's, um, you know, it's it's great to be able to use them because they are interesting I have like sat there and thought oh, I'd love to use that but I just oh that's a bit torn but I just don't have the project for it well now I do thanks to Tsunami Rose <laughs> she's so inspirational though I find her really inspirational I'm also just in case you're wondering I'm using a different setup for the camera now I'm not 100% sure about it, it's it's bugging me <laughs> because it's very different from the way I used to have the camera and I'm struggling with having it centred and having it straight and at the minute it's kind of, oh do you know what, so let me know what you think, is it is it okay, is it bothering you, um, I think this one was about there, you know I, I really need to to know where that is don't I yeah so it needs to come down just a touch let's just put this in place and then I can use that as a guide um so yeah let me know in the comments below is the is it okay is it where you want it to be 
<laughs> can you see okay is there anything bugging you because really i'm not 100 percent convinced and um i want it to be a good setup so that you can see what i'm doing and that my big head doesn't go in the way <laughs> and that um it's it's square because it's it's a bit it can be a bit skew if i mean the way i had the camera before it worked for me but you know it kind of it wasn't practical for the space <laughs> so i've had to move things um and hopefully it works let me know in the comments below is the camera okay is, have you got it you know if you got any comments please tell me if it's not working because i'd rather know than just carry on and thinking that i'm doing okay now that needs a little something down the side i thought that was going to fit but it doesn't but that's okay because i can we could put something else there actually um let's see let's see i'm trying to think what else we've got let's have a look at these images because it could do with another image we could manage another image in there let's have a look at these ones i want something that's going to fit in the space now that's not too bad so that's an idea <laughs> isn't that a cute little scene all thrown with the snowballs and the snowman in the pack oh that's gorgeous that's no good it's too short how about santa claus oh yeah it's going to be santa claus we're going to have two sannies on but don't forget that's going to be the front of the page that's going to be the back they're not going to be next to each other because the signature is going to be in between so it doesn't really matter too much because once it's folded over it's gonna you're not gonna see those two images together so I spent the morning um, coffee dying so my hands are an absolute mess <laughs> um, I should say tea dying because I didn't put any coffee in this time I've been playing with my mixtures again um, and I wanted a lighter effect so I've gone with just the tea this time and um, yeah it worked out great and I'm gonna show you the results in a minute because um, I've been using my little um, shapes again and they do look really nice they look really cute I do like the idea of that but that one's just not thick enough I wonder if I like that I really do like that do you know what I'm gonna go with that but I'm gonna try and cut it precise Now let's fingers crossed. Did I get it? I got it. I got it. I got it. She got it. She got it. She. There we go. That's a little bit thick, and I wouldn't normally put something that thick because this is like um, scrap of paper. I wouldn't normally put something that thick across where I'm going to have the um, the fold but it's only a tiny little bit of paper so I think it can take it if that was any bigger than that or if it was going that way I would say no because you want thin paper where you're going to have your um, your fold it's just so that it's going to sit more nicely it folds easier it's going to be um, sitting more nicely in your junk journals so otherwise you know have at it but it, these are just little considerations that I've figured out um, both from watching the Tsunami Rose videos and from my own little experiments and escapades it doesn't matter if things don't glue down perfectly because don't forget we're going to sew around everything so every image is going to be secured with stitches as well as glue so don't worry about that as long as you get it on mostly I'm putting plenty on just because I don't want any bubbles appearing just cut the top of the paper um, because I, I prefer mine really well glued on but you can if you don't want to use all that much glue because you are going to sew around it you can just put a little dab of glue in the middle just to hold things in place until you can get to the sewing machine I prefer it all glued in again now look at that isn't that gorgeous um yeah that's perfect and like I said once that's folded you see you're going to have one center on one side and one center on another so that's going to be perfect I'm loving it okay so we'll put that aside to dry as well now I'm just going to move all these bits put these all back into the little folders I try to keep you know them separate so I've got images in one 
patterns in another. I think I've already said that. But yeah, try and keep them separate just because it's easier <laughs> when, you're, um, when you're doing these Franken pages than just having a big pile. Because when I first time I did it, I did just have a big pile of stuff on the um, on the table, and it was just <laughs> it was so hard. I couldn't. I couldn't keep everything in the in like sight. I was losing bits. I couldn't find the right bits, and yeah, it wasn't great. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm quickly going to sew around. Now, the way the camera is, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing in the way of watching the actual sewing because you can see you can't see in the sewing machine. But I'm going to show you each stage. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off by picking out a big piece, which is this one here. And I'm going to go up and across. Now what happens is you, some of your um, pieces are going to end up fully sewn round. Um, some of them are just going to have lines up. But that doesn't really matter that much. What you can do if you wanted to. Say this piece here is beautiful. It's really pretty. If I wanted to make that the focal point. I could sew around that completely. And then sew the lines off of that. If I wanted to. But I'm not going to. I'm going to sew around this, this young lady. Because I want her to have a complete line. So here we go, loud noise of the sewing machine because, you know, it's Betty. And you can be as messy or as neat as you want with the sewing. Use a zigzag unless you, I mean, I suppose you could use a straight stitch if you wanted to go around each and every piece with a straight stitch. I don't see that being a problem. Um, it's a lot of sewing <laughs> but you could go straight stitch all the way around that straight stitch all the way around that and then do it that way that would be perfectly fine but I like the zigzag I think it just gives it that extra bit of texture so you can see I've put a, a line around uh, this lady this little girl isn't she so cute it must have took them ages to get all those curls in perfect little ringlets <gasps> I know they used to um, wrap them in um, rags because I remember I remember years ago me and my friend trying to do it and um, yeah three hours later with scissors brushes and trying to get these rags out of our hair <laughs> did not work <laughs> um, so yeah hats off to them where's my scissors it's easy with me scissors now I'm snipping these off on the Tsunami Rose video she doesn't she has all the wire uh, all the threads everywhere and it looks really really nice um, but you know me I'm, I'm just I'm not one for the threads but if you wanted to you could just leave them on and then that just adds to again your, um, your aesthetic so now I'm just I'm picking each line and I'm just going around because what you want is you want to make sure you've got every line sewn and that way every piece is secure to the page and like I said it's the, it's it's up to you which way you want to do it and where you want to start sewing and finish sewing when I was starting in the middle of the, the piece I do a little tiny back stitch just because I want to secure the thread Don't bother on the edges because we're going to sew around the edges and as we do we'll catch all the threads. But when you start and you finish on the inside of the piece it's a good idea just to give it a little back stitch. Or alternatively you could pull the thread through the back and tighten a knot. Um, you know if you want to do that it's too much work for me. <laughs> I just, I just want to get it sewn so that I can get on to the next piece. <laughs> I don't have the patience. <laughs> Little back stitch. And obviously the bigger the pieces you use, the more or less sewing you're going to have. If you use lots of little pieces, you know, you're going to have lots of sewing. It, it's all personal preference. I've just got a selection of big pieces and little pieces and that's usually how it works out because your pieces are all different sizes and shapes. Some of them are square, some of them are oblong um, and it just works out that way so yeah. You do as much or as little as you want really. 
I mean, if you put enough glue on, you don't have to sew around this. If you wanted to, you know, if you've glued it well enough, you could just leave the page like that. Um, and that would, that would, again, would work perfectly and it would still look really nice. I just, I like the idea of sewing around it. Um, it just gives it that nice feel to it. I mean, Franken paper is nothing, nothing new. It's been around for a long time. I think it's, it is Tsunami Roll's original idea. But I've watched various um, YouTubers, craft YouTubers making it for various reasons. Not just junk journalists. There was a, a lady doing mixed media art projects that I was watching and hers were perfect. And her, her sewing was just, well, you could tell she was an artist. Come on, Betty, what's the matter with you? Don't do this to me, darling. There we go, that's better. Right. The more you get, you go into it, the, the more you've got sewn, the more you find little pieces that need to be sewn. So, you know, after a while, you end up with just little rows to do <laughs> once all the big pieces have been sewn right. And you'll see what I mean, I'll show you in a second. I'm loving this this is my new favorite thing to do it was the collaging before and now it's this I'm just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's it is collaging but in a different way and you get to sew around it so you can see now that I've got most of this sewn I'm just going to push this out of the way just a little bit now that I've got most of this sewn now I'm starting to find just the little bits and then you know you just need to have a really good look and to make sure that you've sewn all the little bits um, because you want it, you want it to be complete, and you don't want to have just the odd line here and there. Well, I, I don't want that anyway. So. As I said, each to their own. I think we've got one little piece left, and then I'll give it a check. And it's quick. It's quick when you're doing this. Um, like I'll collage. A ton um, and then you know have let them dry and then sit and sew them all together so you can do it like production line um, and that works great um, and look at I'm just looking now to make sure I've got no more lines left and I don't think I have so now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the outside and just try and keep the stitching close to the edge you can use your sewing machine they, they, they usually have like a guide um, Use your guides, whichever one is perfect for keeping the, um, the stitching on the edge. And as always, turn your corners on the inside stitch with the zigzag. I will say one thing, make sure you've got a couple of spools ready because you're going through your thread. <laughs> Especially if you're making a bunch of these. And I've been um, playing with the different colours of thread to see what kind of effect it gives and you do get a lovely effect depending on what thread you use and see there we go that's that's finished and it looks delightful and on the other side I'm just going to check there's a couple of places where it's caught the thread and I'm just going to pull them clear and snip it off and this one oh what's happened there oh it's caught I see what's happened there we are um i think that's it i think everything's there right now that looks great that looks great let's get this folded and see what it looks like and it's a good idea when you when you're sticking them down where i found is to try and um, keep in mind where your spine's going to be 
because you don't don't want one of these edges on the spine it just makes it awkward and it weakens the piece look at that isn't that gorgeous isn't she beautiful and it just you know i'm just so in love with this i really am look at that so there we go so like i said i've got all of these other pieces i have got tons of sewing to do now and um <laughs> and tons of um of more of these to make <laughs> because hey why not i have got a proper store of them now i've got loads of christmas ones and then i've got loads of non-christmas ones so these are going to become a regular feature i think in my junk journals from now on because i'm in love with them i'll tell you what else i did do if i can find them quickly i'll show you um what else have i done i did get some tn cards I don't think I'm going to find them. Where did I put them? Oh, where did I put them? You know when you want something and you just can't find it? Wait a minute, I've got it somewhere. <laughs> I think I have, but no. I can't find them. I will show you in another one. I got some, um, some little cards um, and I've just sewn there's exactly the same thing i've made little um franken cards out of them to use in my journals now i did you no know, it's one of them things where you put something down for five seconds and then you can't find it and they've just disappeared and yep they've gone <laughs> i'll find them and then i'll show you them <laughs> and you can see what i've been up to i thought i'd put them on with my christmas things i've just got a pile of christmas things in the corner and uh, they're not there <laughs> I wonder if that's one of them oh here we go here we go so all I had was some index cards and I did exactly the same on them I did the franken um, franken paper um, exactly the same technique but I did it on the cards and now I've got these beautiful cards to use in the journals and aren't they beautiful now some of them you know if you use like lots of pattern but not a focal point you, you can still stick something on but a couple of these they just they don't even need a focal point they don't need anything else they're decorated enough and i'm just going to pop them into um my junk journal and and they'll just be perfect as they are because they've got the focal point they've got the little tag area <laughs> well that one has um and yeah they're going to be just perfect and I like again I like the idea of having the, the different compartments on here to write on because that means you can you can either just go with go with it all the way and just write over the top of the stitching or you can use each separate little block as a separate um, journaling spot and have like a couple of things on you know just maybe jot down a couple of things so what happened today and um, what did I and um, where did I go who did I meet you know that kind of thing and so yeah that was my little experiment with franken paper so i hope you've enjoyed that give it a go give it a go because i'm telling you now you will be hooked you will be hooked <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind that you will end up hooked on this stuff <laughs> so um happy crafting i have missed you all so much i'm so pleased to be back it is just wonderful to be back um i'm sorry that i was missing for so long you know but hey this happens life happens i'm back and i hope that you're going to be back with me drop a comment let me know what you've all been up to and um, let me know about the camera setup is it working for you is it okay can you see okay am i getting in the way let me know and um, yeah give this a go i'll drop some links down below to the um, tsunami rose video and to the different digitals that i've talked about um and what was the other one i was going to drop a link to i can't remember now but yeah i'll drop some links down below so have a look and um and follow them through but yeah so it's been it's been too long and i'm so pleased to be back so stay safe and um take care of each other and happy crafting and uh oh i'm going to be doing my december daily so keep an eye out for that i'm a few days late but that's okay i don't mind <laughs> we'll just keep up with it so take care everyone stay safe and happy crafting bye